Today is all about Mother Earth and there is only one gift she's asking. Less plastic, please. Like our montage says, this is of course Jamaica Magazine and I'm Adrian Atkinson. It's the start of a new week and hopefully the start of a new approach to the materials we use and how we dispose of them. You don't want to miss this exciting lineup, so please stay tuned. Keep with Island clean, so clean from the beaks to the beach, so clean. Now that tea up Jamaica, please don't do it. Keep with Island clean, so clean from the beaks to the beach, so clean. Now that tea up Jamaica, please don't do it. No dash, no paper, no dash, no plastic. Dispose your garbage responsibly. No know how to recycle. Learn it quick and if you drop it, better pick up every piece of it. Plastics last forever. Don't forget the bits. Cause when them touch the street, them end up in at the sea. Collect pan the reef where they fish them feed. And when you want seafood, I eat Keep your eat. Island clean. So clean. From the peaks to the beach. So clean. Now that tea up Jamaica, please don't do it. Not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica. Here's the truth the world's plastic problem, even Jamaica's plastic problem, is too big for any one of us to solve. So we're not asking you to do that. Just do the little you can to cut back on how much you're using and sending to the dump. is under attack and unless we arrest this problem we will be in serious trouble. The rapid growth of plastics is threatening the survival of the planet from littering our beaches and landscape to clogging our landfills and poisoning and injuring marine life. When the plastic makes its way out to sea what tends to happen is it breaks up into little smaller pieces, but it doesn't disappear. It's still there in the marine environment. It's still there in the sea. The fish eat it, the marine animals eat it, and then it becomes a part of them. Plastic has become a part of our marine life. And then of course, we as humans eat those fish, and then we have essentially ingested plastic and there's all types of toxins and chemicals that are associated with plastic that you don't want in your body. Earth Day 2018 is dedicated to stopping and reversing this trend through worldwide education to fundamentally change human attitude and behavior about plastics. Plastic causes serious problems in our environment. Every piece of plastic that was ever produced on this earth still exists in some way, shape or form. So we really need to do our part in reducing the amount of plastic that we produce. You don't need a plastic bag or a plastic container every single time you go to the supermarket. In terms of reusing, a lot of the time we get takeout or even things like margarine and you know, those types of products, they come in plastic packaging that can be reused. So you can reuse those containers for other purposes after you're finished with them, rather than throwing them away. If you walk down the street in your communities, across the length and breadth of the island, you will notice something that is most common. Plastic, plastic, and more plastic. It is the most littered item in our country and the world burying the planet and our livelihoods under waste. The problem is mostly due to the unbiodegradable nature of plastic. Simply put, it does not rot, which means we are creating everlasting rubbish in huge and unsustainable amounts. But the good news is, I, you, all of us can fix this growing problem. Here's how. The Jamaica Environment Trust, we have a recycling depot at our office at 123 Constant Spring Road, unit number five. 
We're in the vicinity of Steelcraft Furniture Land, um, right off of Constant Spring Road. You can bring your plastics here. Um, we take two types of plastic, type one and type two. And the easiest way to identify what type of plastic you have is to look at the bottom of the bottle. So the clear plastic bottles, your soda bottles, your water bottles, these are your type one plastic. When you're talking about the more opaque bottles, the ones that you can't see through, right? Um, household cleaners, bulk syrup, those kind of bottles, um, that's the type two plastic. And we're one of uh, several depots that are located mostly in Kingston, but there are a few outside of Kingston. Um, all of this is really supported by Recycling Partners of Jamaica, so they are our big partner in this. Recycling Partners of Jamaica, of course, is a public and private sector partnership. So you have a lot of the distributors of uh, products that are, you know, found in these types of packaging, partnering with the government of Jamaica to facilitate recycling in Jamaica. We're open Monday to Saturday. The gate opens at about 8.30, 9 o'clock on these days and we're closed by about 5.30, 6 o'clock. So, the next time you decide to discard of your plastic, do it the correct way. Go for paper and other biodegradable materials when you can. And let's make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business in a sustainable way. farmers are hardworking and I want to let them know that we are going to give them every support possible, right? Inclusive of greater and more aggressive extension services. There are other things we will have. We have a productivity incentive program and this year I'm doing $800 million in farm road repair. So the government is very serious about working with the farmers and I embrace the opportunity because we have to we have to look at um, different methods of how to increase production and to cr increase, increase output productivity. I want to say a special word of, of thanks to our farmers on Farmers Month. Onion rings, battered, deep fried, sweet rings of flavor. They're also good in soups and you certainly can't put on a meat pot without dicing one or two. I think you know where I am going with this, but let me just spell it out anyway. Whether they are just part of the flavor profile or the star of the dish, most Jamaicans love using onions in their cooking, which means demand is high. And if the government has its way, they will all come from our soil, and our soil only. In July 2017, the Caribbean Brawlers Group launched Imagination Farms to produce homegrown products. Now, it's planting onions, scotch bonnet pepper, sorrel, sweet corn, and West Indies Sea Island cotton on 400 acres of farmland in Hill Run, St. Catherine. Caribbean Brawlers reaped 12 acres of onions under its homegrown brand. This venture is responding to an appeal from government for ramped up local production of onions. The statistics are telling us that right now we import over 80% of the onion that we eat. It is hoped that Imagination Farms output will help to reduce imports by 10%. The company has plans to increase this to 50% over the next five years. We have a targeted program where we are looking at import substitution and looking at export potential. So, for example, for onions, we want to be a part of the thrust to curtail the amount of imports coming to the country. We are importing about 4 million US, 9 million kgs, and we think that Imagination Farms regarding onions, and we want to, to be a part of that process in terms of stemming, arresting the importation, and we have started on a good road. So our yields have been good. This project by CB is demonstrating that it can be done here, and it can be done at a competitive price, and it can be sold to the supermarkets and sold to the hotels at a, at a reasonable price. And it's a fresh
fresh product that's coming straight out of the, out of the ground. They're going to plant another 60 acres. Onions, onions, onions. The government is calling on more farmers to pick up the mantle and help curtail our onion imports. And support is on offer through the Agricultural Push Start program. And this is one where anything coming through, rather, that is the inputs, the seed, the fertilizer, and the spray will be given to the farmers up front. As long as you prepare the land, Rada will have the seed, the fertilizer, and the spray to give you when you are ready to plant. That means that the only thing that you need to do is to provide the labor and to make sure that you take care of the crop. For more information on the Agricultural Push Start program, call or visit your nearest Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA office. Imagine it, believe it, you can play your part in helping to lower Jamaica's high import costs. Protect Jamaica, plant your grass. Help us become more resilient to climate change impacts. Protect Jamaica, plant a tree. It improves the island's national biodiversity. Trees may be fruit, ornamental, or timber, but must be native or suitable to the area's natural landscape. Join the Jamaica Million Tree Campaign and help to plant one million trees by June 30, 2019. This is a call to action by the National Environment and Planning Agency. Understanding game reserves, what does that mean? Could it be Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation? I highly doubt it. As part of our Earth Day celebrations, we'll be highlighting some of Jamaica's protected natural habitats. Here, birds are at rest. Wild animals make their home. The inquisitive eye gets its full share of rich colors, and at times, man and animal venture into a game of hide-and-seek. A game reserve is a protected area of land where birds are um, with, you know, be, with part of their habitat where they would nest and so on, and it's not legal to shoot in those areas. A game reserve is an area that um, the birds do their nesting. A game reserve is a place where the birds them, them, them live there. It's where people hunt birds and things like that. I don't remember anymore. A game reserve is a place that I can't go. You're not allowed to shoot there, you're not allowed to fish there, you're not allowed to do anything to destroy the environment there. A game reserve is a parcel of land or body of water or an area comprising both land and water within which the hunting of birds or any other animals is strictly prohibited. It's also illegal to bring into these game reserves any weapons or dogs for hunting or even to take the nest of a bird. In Jamaica, game reserves are monitored by the National Environment and Planning Agency. Game reserves are like a refuge for, for game birds in particular, where they can escape all the hunting activities that are occurring on the island. There are also good roosting areas and breeding areas for these birds. In addition, some of these areas are also areas where a lot of endangered birds are and we actually don't want any hunting activities in there in case there is accidental or um, illegal hunting of these birds. A lot of these game reserves um, do have many other species there. Another endangered species that's come to mind when we speak of wetlands for example is the endangered American crocodile and we know a lot of people have some fear of the crocodile and we just don't want that human-crocodile interactions because the crocodile always comes out on the losing end. So 
So it's always good to ensure that these areas are no shooting areas, no hunting areas. Forest reserves are also considered game reserves as well. There are 19 game reserves across the island and we are currently at the Amity Hall and Goat Island game reserves and this one in particular is, is, of, is a little interesting in that it's the only game reserve that incorporates both land and a body of water. Over here is actually a part of the game reserve and in the background there that's the Great Goat Island and so between the mainland here and the Great Goat Island this body of water is also a no shooting area. So other than this, where are the other game reserves located on the island? There is the Great Morass Game Reserve in Holland Bay, St. Thomas. In St. Catherine, the Portmore and Greater Portmore and Cabaretta Point Game Reserves. In Clarendon, the Long Island, West Harbor Peak Bay and Mason River Savannah Game Reserves. Bordering on Clarendon and Manchester is the Alligator Pond, Gut River and Canoe Valley Game Reserves. Also in Manchester is the Rygate Game Reserve. Over in St. Elizabeth, there is the Black River Upper and Lower Morass Game Reserves, as well as the Parity, Great Morass, and Stanmore Hill Game Reserves. Bordering on Westmoreland and Hanover in Negril, the there is the Great Morass Game Reserve. In Montego Bay, St. James, there is the Bogue Lagoon Creek Game Reserve, while over in the west, in the parish of Trelawney, is the Glistening Waters Game Reserve. Portland is home to the Fairy Hill Port Antonio Game Reserve, while St. Anne, Jamaica's Garden Parish, has the Knapdale Game Reserves. There is also the Kingston and St. Andrew Game Reserves. On our NEPA website, for example, you can actually find maps of all these game reserves. And it's, it's important for, for persons to, be, to, to know exactly where they are, because sometimes people would create new tracks and there won't be a sign necessarily at that new track. Um, so it's important to, to know exactly where you are. You're not allowed to hunt there. And if I was to go in there with my weapon to hunt and you found me, I could go to jail. So I won't go in there. No shooting zone. You can't shoot there. If Nepa catch you, you go to jail. That's right. These hunters know the law well, which declares that any person found in a game reserve in possession of any animal, bird, bird's eggs or nests, will be presumed to be in violation of the Wildlife Protection Act. This can attract a maximum fine of $100,000, 12 months imprisonment or both, if convicted by a resident magistrate. So for each game reserve, there is actually a buffer around the game reserve of 50 meters. So persons are asked, are required to observe a 50 meter zone around each game reserve where no hunting is allowed or no trapping of, of birds or animals. Is allowed. We are along the edge of the Amity Hall and Goat Island Game Reserve and this is actually the boundary, one of the boundary lines, this canal right here and so no hunting is allowed within 50 meters of this canal and everything over here is actually a part of the game reserve where no hunting is allowed. There are signs at the entrance to game reserves. Identifying one is an easy feat. For more information on game reserves, contact the National Environment and Planning Agency at 754-7540 or visit their website at nepa.gov.jm. So here are the facts. Seven out of ten Jamaicans die from a non-communicable disease. Because we love our people and we want them to live better quality lives. We, the Ministry of Health and our partners are launching Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Moves is a call to action to prevent non-communicable diseases. By educating and encouraging Jamaicans to be active. Eat healthy. And start living 30 minutes at a time because 30 minutes of physical activity each day, along with proper nutrition, can go a long way. To prevent your risk from developing certain NCDs, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, and certain cancers. And remember, it's life promoting. That's why you see me going hard right now. I'm all about living. So help us take this first step towards a healthier Jamaica, so you can enjoy more moments, more memories, more life.
Measuring 15 to 30 millimeters in length, these tiny beet armyworms are responsible for millions of dollars in losses to the agriculture sector. They have ravaged hectares of onions and scallions in the new forest Duff House Agro Park in Manchester. Within this area, yeah, we have over a thousand farmers, uh, close to a minimum of about um, say 800 farmers was affected, over 100 million was um, dam uh, estimating damages to farmers. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries has spent over $18 million to assist the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, with their intervention efforts in tackling the outbreak. When we observed that we had the outbreak of the beet armyworm in our fields, some of us didn't know what, it, what they looked like or you know, what stages they were. However, the RADA representative from the area was contacted and we, we got some training from RADA to identify the different stages of the bee tummy worm from the eggs to the larva to the pupae and you know to the back stage. The intervention strategies were varied and have proven fruitful. One of the best thing to do is to hand pick to reduce the feel. Because they're inside the leaf of the scallion the chemical will not reach them. So what we do we get to our buckets and we pick the leaves off and then we apply the chemical. We use um, agri, zentar and tracer. Agri we mostly use for the, the, the eggs and it controls the, the worms at the small stage. And the chaser is for the, 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 the worms at, at the small stage. Because as we know and experience, there is, there is no insecticide that can manage the, the more mature worms. The farmers were also taught how to make and set traps to catch the moth. Well, they told us how to make the traps using a plastic bottle and wires. Uh, you know, we connect the, the, the pheromone. It attracts the males. We attach that to the wire, and so the bats, they will be attracted to the pheromone, which has a female scent. They come to the, to the trap and fall into the soap water. That helped us tremendously because it reduced the amount of worm in our fields, now we are rebounding from that. We did a simple check at this field, and what we do was to use what we refer to as the X method. So we did that by setting up five stations in the field. So for each station, we check um, five plants, right? And for those five plants, what we did was to count all the leaves on each plant and count the amount, check the amount of damaged leaf. And then we just select one leaf and check to see if there are any worm inside of it. And then what we realize is that we find one worm, which is a dead worm, simply meaning that the, um, the chemicals that we have recommended to the farmer is actually working. As we are at a very low level of infestation that you can hardly take the worm, it is very much important that farmers pay attention with their thermal traps in terms of the presence of the bats, so we can um, put in preventive measures in terms of spraying to actually prevent the re-emerging of the bee time worm. Mommy? Yes, Zoe? Can we read this book? It will only take 10 minutes. Sure, sit down. Every spring, Madame Angel Wing arranges a Do you have 10 minutes? Read with your child today. Reading with your children for just 10 minutes each day helps develop their language and listening skills, stimulates their imagination, and expands their understanding of the world. So, start reading with your child today. Imagine a world without plastic pollution, clean beaches, healthy marine life, a cleaner and safer environment. Help end plastic pollution by finding out how many plastic items you consume every year or just every day and make a pledge to reduce the amount. Let's work to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. Be the change.
Thanks for watching another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Do join us again tomorrow and we'll do this all over again. Do send us your feedback on today's show to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Also, follow us on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Download our app on your Apple and Android devices. And you can also visit our website, gis.gov.jm, for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.